day one and the next 29 days. He fell in love with her instantly, at first sight, when he encountered her for the very first time 30 days ago. That morning, after four weeks of lonely, bitter wandering around the island, he returned under the tree, to his lair. She was already there, on a soft carpet of turquoise moss, adored with rosy petals. Every time he had to leave his shelter for a while, the tree bloomed and produced giant pink flowers of extraordinary beauty. The tree bloomed several times a year, but he has never been able to witness the blossoming. Every time, on the night before his return, flowers fell, dressing everything around with huge, dazzling petals. From afar, on his way back to the tree, that morning he saw that the turquoise hill was completely covered with bright pink velvet. And there she stood among them, almost knee-deep in luscious, fragrant flowers. She looked like an ancient goddess, Venus, descended from a Botticelli painting. Porcelain skin graceful rounded shapes and golden hair, cascading in curls to her thighs. The morning sun gave her curls a fiery hue. A light breeze gently parted waves of her hair, revealing full breasts and dark nipples. She looked at him with love and joy of a faithful wife who waited for the return of her beloved husband after a long absence. Approaching, they silently looked at each other, engulfed in the intoxicating fragrance of fallen flowers. A myriad of crumbling petals shaped as fishing boats dazzled on the turquoise surface around the mighty tree, as always the long-awaited boats returned to their harbor. He took her hands in his, squeezing fingers tightly they stood mesmerized and looked into each other's eyes. He has never been so happy before. You own my soul, my being, my life, he said, not using a single word. I love you more than you can imagine, she echoed silently. Harmony and peace filled their hearts. They were made for each other. They didn't need words to comprehend this. Touching her revived him. The butterflies, which had lost their ability to fly a month ago, came to life. They spread their wings, awakening feelings that were asleep in sadness. The faded world was restoring its former self in full glory of color. The pain of the past four weeks had left him, and the void filled with new sensation. Hand in hand, full of ecstatic joy and ready to outburst with happiness, they descended from the turquoise hill down to the silver surface of the island. Feet were sinking ankle-deep in the softest cover. Glowing, shimmery ash draped the surface of the island like a silk throw. Even in the calm weather, the particles of this amazing cover did not fall to the ground, but hovered over it like weightless soft silvery stars, sparkling from constant movement in the sun's rays. Sparks never stopped their mysterious dance, burning in the sun with diamond dust during the day and enigmatically flickering with the arrival of night. They walked through the soft glitter as if stepping on clouds, enjoying the pleasant touch and closeness of each other. Even at the foot of the hill, the roots of the giant tree protruded like shapeless dunes. Here and there, they were overgrown with the same pleasant velvet turquoise moss as on the top. Besides moss, the surface of the roots was home to amazing in their appearance and bright burgundy-colored marble proboscis plants. They grew in groups, like mushrooms, but resembling small elephant trunks wide open at the end. Gentle breezes 
slowly swept the ash into low mounds around the roots. As if waiting for that very moment, flexible proboscis swayed in unison, opened their mouth holes, and sucked in silvery ash. Gluttonous proboscis greedily devoured silver dust and were insatiable. They, like impatient chicks in the nest, constantly moved and opened their beaks in anticipation of food. The island was surrounded by the ocean on all sides. The man knew his lands by heart and was eager to show his beloved the possessions. They hurried off side by side in the warm morning sun, naked, primordial, in love, happy. He felt reborn, and with her next to him he experienced an extraordinary sense of freedom and novelty. Nature, in all its manifestations, filled them with awe. Treading on soft silver pollen, they reached an emerald lagoon. Mother Nature did not skimp on colors, creating a haven of unearthly azure color. She, as a talented artist, has mixed all the most beautiful shades of blue and green into one unique color. Of exquisite beauty, the lagoon resembled a large pearl shell. It was separated from the sea by a wall of red coral reefs, which, being quite low, made it possible to admire the sea while swimming. The bright turquoise color of the water against the backdrop of the scarlet reef was impressive. The sea, warmed by the sun, glittered playfully in a golden light. The rays reflected on the surface and sparkled invitingly. The lovers could not resist and, holding hands, jumped into the water. In a moment their heads appeared on the surface. Like children, they burst into ringing laughter. Her golden hair was floating around them in circles. He enjoyed watching her, pure and unsophisticated, direct and uninhibited, virgin and immaculate. She was the embodiment of his dreams. How contagiously she would laugh when small fish swam near, brushing her body with their fins. He caught himself thinking that those few hours since her appearance on the island have already tied them tightly with an invisible thread, like long years happily spent together. So easy and comfortable they felt. They found simple joy in their freedom, spiritual closeness and contemplation of each other. The first day flew by quickly. The lovers swam, ate delicacies from the trees and bread like grain shoots, sprouting here and there throughout the island. At sunset, they found shelter near the lagoon, right on the grass, under the hospitable canopy of the fan-shaped leaves of a dwarf date palm. With its abundance of sunny days gloriously matched by abundance of food, the island was truly remarkable. Never before had its inhabitants been hungry or thirsty. The island was full of vegetation and trees that bore fruit all year round. All you had to do was reach out. That's exactly what they did with pleasure. Clusters of dates on the palm tree under which they spent the night hung invitingly low and burned brightly with amber fire at sunset. An exquisite delicacy just begged to be put in the mouth. The fragrant pulp of honey fruits, covered with a thin, shiny skin, spoiled them with this wonderful taste that was a sweet embodiment of the energy of this island paradise. With the onset of the magical night, when the sky over the island plunged into shimmering twilight, they lay side by side eye to eye, right on heaps of warm and soft grass. Although they had never met until today, they knew each other all their lives. In complete silence and moonlight, they reclined until they fell asleep, overwhelmed with a feeling of absolute happiness. He was the first to wake up, enjoying the memories of yesterday 
and filled with exciting anticipation of the new, he was afraid to move so as not to wake her up. This morning was their first time waking up together. He just lay there and looked at her, admiring. He loved her. He was infinitely happy. The island had the magical power to fill him with fresh experiences. It opened a new gamut of emotions, made him live both through elation or misery over and over again. The sense of his belonging to the island and being an integral part of it was undeniable. Having realized that the island had unlimited power over him, he did not resist it, but willingly and happily accepted all its manifestations. He could not remember when and under what circumstances he suddenly found himself on the island. It always remained a mystery for him. One day he just appeared, as if he came from nowhere, but from that very moment the island consumed him and became his entire world. It seemed that his life began from the exact moment when a few years ago he woke up on the shore in complete bewilderment. He was tormented by questions and a complete lack of memories. Try as he might, he could not remember who he was or where he came from. He did not remember anything that happened to him before neither bright flashes from childhood, nor memories from a wild period of youth, neither recollections of his family, nor faces of his relatives, nothing. Since his appearance, he has been seized by a painful longing and being constantly pulled somewhere into the unknown. But what exactly he needed to do in this case, and how he had to act, he could not understand. In full dismay, he stared at the blue line of the horizon for hours at a time, waiting for salvation or an influx of memories. He could not explain to himself what exactly he was waiting or who or what he yearned for. Fearing to miss the chance for deliverance and lose the opportunity to return to his forgotten past, he still would not dare to leave this part of the coast where he had found himself for the first time. The island seemed terrifying and mysterious, gloomy and completely unsuitable for survival. On the sandy beach where he took refuge was nothing but high coastal cliffs. Trying in vain to restore his memory, he remained on the beach subsisting on seaweed and fresh water, sipping through the cracks in the rocks. Spending every day in a state of feverish expectation of something inexplicable, he would find destruction going into the sea. He would wait for water to be perfectly still, and then he would contemplate his own unfamiliar reflection. He gazed at the water and saw brown shoulder length hair that fell in a mess right over his face. With a large palm, he brushed back the thick strands from his forehead trying to carefully peer into appearance of a stranger. He could see a thin face with a straight, neat nose, high pronounced cheekbones framed by a short dark beard, here and there speckled with golden threads of hair. The well-defined eyebrows added a strong willed look to his face, the large eyes emitting deep sadness which was noticeable even in the reflection of the water, were framed by dark shadows of thick eyelashes. The eye color remained a mystery. The mirror surface of water did not make it possible to determine it. He felt fit and strong. He saw his powerful hands with white palms. The slender torso passed into muscular legs, crowned with well-developed rounded calf muscles. Large and broad shoulders, which he observed in the reflection, complemented the overall picture of a strong physique. He was getting acquainted with himself as he would with a random companion, the one he suddenly met on the way and grew familiar with as the journey went on. He felt young, 
although the idea of age was a mystery to him, covered in darkness. He was strong in body, but exhausted in spirit, lost in a world of loneliness and the unknown, he had no past to miss and reflect on, he had no future to aspire to. His realm was a small stretch of sandy shore, endless horizon, and a dream to find the meaning of his existence. The hope of uncovering his destiny soon began to leave him. He almost despaired until one day he smelled an extraordinary scent in the air. The alluring aroma suddenly filled his mind and made him forget about worries. A pleasant, persistent scent emanated from somewhere behind the mountains and called him, beckoned him. The man rejoiced. Without second thoughts or hesitation, clinging to the new goal that suddenly appeared in his life, he took off without delay, like a ship lost at sea, which abandoned all hopes of rescue but suddenly saw the light of the beacon, so did he find a reason to live. And whatever it was, whatever emitted this extraordinary smell, the intoxicating aroma, was that very ray of light, his ray of hope. After spending so much time on the shore, one day he discovered a barely visible tray leading into the mountains. Having found the purpose, he followed that trail now, the alluring smell penetrating the very depth of his subconscious and infusing him with hope for freedom and resurrected dreams led him as a guide. Following the path amidst the rocks, he crossed the mountain pass and then reached a gorge on the other side. Inhaling the scent, he felt a sense of peace, as if the scent was a part of his past, something painfully familiar dear to his heart, but long forgotten. The scent intensified with each passing step, indicating that his direction was true. He walked along the winding paths of the gorge, and the landscape that surrounded him was cold and depressing, weighing him down with its bleak appearance. The thickening fog, hanging low over the tops of the mountains and descending into the depth of the gorge, intensified with eerie impression. Tired and exhausted, he followed the trail that led him to a hill. He climbed it and found himself standing on the edge of a cliff. The harsh scenery of the terrifying mountains was suddenly replaced with a breathtaking sight. From above, he observed the sheer splendor of the island, which until now was hidden by the frightening cold rocks. The newly discovered part of the island was nearly flat and covered with a silver veil shimmering in the sun. In contrast, the gardens exploding with madness of colors occupied the foothills. In the very middle of the island, like a heart, a huge tree grew, perched on a hill. The crown of the giant stretched all the way into the sky. Clouds hanging low above the ground seemed to have been strung on the branches of a bizarre colossus. No doubt the intoxicating scent emanated from that tree. The men hurried down the mountain as puppet, devoid of any strength to resist its powerful master. He ran to the middle of the island towards the tree. Bedazzled by the sand, he turned for a moment into a predator, a mountain lion, and jumping, clinging to mossy bumps with his hands and pushing off with his feet, climbed to the base of the tree along the soft turquoise cover. The ground near the roots was draped with giant petals of flowers falling from the tree, the inviting sweet smell that brought him here to the object of his obsession was emitted by the newly fallen inflorescences. From that time, from that very day, 
The tree beckoned him, then made him run away from it, then enticed him again to come back. After all the time spent on the shore longing and waiting for something unknown, being in the center of the island now, the man felt like he returned home, the place where he has not been for a long time. Everything here seemed so familiar and close to his heart. The gloom that haunted him from the very first day on the island disappeared without a trace, as if all the happy moments of his life were connected with this spot, although he could not remember any of them. The island was his place. The power of fresh sea air energized him. The abandoned flora gave him nourishment and crystal-clear springs quenched his thirst. Not only the island became his shelter and protected his body with fatherly care, but also filled his soul with a full gamut of exciting feelings and emotions. Each time new, sometimes happy, sometimes tragic. Some tormented him, choked him in pain, others enveloped him in utter bliss, making him cry with tears of joy. Then he died in the abyss of loneliness, just to be resurrected by love later. The island would take his life, then would bring him back and reward with happiness again. One such uplifting episode, almost eclipsing his mind, he experienced now, watching a girl with fiery hair. What he felt was boundless, true, unconditional. She lay in front of him fast asleep, his porcelain goddess, whom he had known for only a few hours, but already cherished infinitely. Her curls were scattered over the grass and glowed with amber flame in the rays of the rising sun. He looked at her gorgeous face with quivering eyelids and admired her perfect beauty. His gaze was heartfelt filled with love almost tangible. The girl sensed it on her skin and awoke. She opened her eyes and the whole world was filled with emerald light. Green eyes with an unusual tint radiated love and peace. Her affectionate look penetrated the depth of his soul and made his heart flutter. Soon the journey across the fertile island continued. There was no place for sorrow, and there was no reason to darken the lover's carefree life with everyday worries. Chaste soulmates were not burdened with other needs besides the craving to be close and enjoy each other's company. The harmony of their existence, devoid of depravity and full of true and undivided love, that happy fairy tale promised to last forever. The island seemed to have been created for the bliss and pleasure of its inhabitants. The vast beauty of the azure ocean, fantastic flora forms, whimsical landscape, numerous streams with crystal clear water originating in the mountains, all this blended in breathtaking harmony. In the picturesque cove filled with spring waters, the lovers arranged a font, and the spring gushing from the crevices quenched their thirst with delicious, life-giving liquid. The extravaganza of waterfalls, powerfully cascading into a fog-covered abyss, amazed the travelers with its power. Billions of splashes created a multicolored rainbow that combined the most intricate and unearthly colors. The cliff face was adorned with twisted velvet ivy, and strange plants with giant leaves, in which friendly small animals with tails shaped like fans made their nests. Good natured and curious about the visitors, they would descend from the height and crawl so close to their feet as if begging to be patted on the withers. Other inhabitants of the island, adorable colorful birds, hung upside down on branches and greeted the wanderers with soulful, melodious songs. Showing off their beauty, these birds fully spread their extraordinary wings, amusing the travelers by their color. 
the mishmash palette of hues spilled all over the wide wings was unique to each bird. The whimsical birds could remain motionless for a long time, while their wonderful trills poured from their open beaks like music from gramophones. Fluffy clouds hugged the tops of the cliffs, and the sun's rays penetrated through them, painting the pink-gray granite surfaces with bright spots of light. The man took pleasure in introducing the amazing island and telling his lovely companion about the extraordinary and unafraid animals that inhabited the mountain slopes and thickets of forests. Sometimes she laughed, then wondered, then admired the frenzy of the diversity of the island's flora and fauna. Fruitful year-around gardens arranged in slender rows grew at the foot of the mountains around the island. There were wonderful dwarf trees that gave birth to giant fruits that looked like starfish, and narrow, long trees devoid of foliage and branches sticking out of the ground like sewing needles. They oozed sweet, delicious nectar from their trunks. The island was teeming with plants that provided a variety of food throughout the year. Shrubs, whose leaves were similar to bread cakes in taste and appearance, now and then dropped the old foliage to the ground and immediately renewed with new pastries. Nearby, grotesque-looking dwarf trees thundered, strewn with large bright purple fruits that looked like billiard balls. The fruits ripened and fell to the ground with a crash. They burst and opened loudly, offering to taste the delicious pulp that resembled jelly-like filling. Amazing excursions continued every day. The enthusiastic lovers enjoyed the companionship and the delightful island. During the two weeks they spent together traveling around the island, their immaculate bond grew and their spiritual unity became stronger. Every night, falling asleep, they held each other's hands, looked into the eyes, silently contemplating the depth of their souls and enjoying the purity of feelings. It was their whole world, and it was at their feet, a world of love, so tiny, only he and she in it. At the same time, this world of lovers was immense. It contained a wild spectrum of colorful feelings, the endless passion of emotions, the irrepressible power of the desire to take off and soar above the earth. For each of the lovers, the whole world is contained in the beloved person. The surrounding world ceased to exist and no longer matters. Lovers find comfort and happiness in the simplest of things. A light touch, a brief look. Lovers do not care about values or possessions. Lovers feed and replenish each other. What is love? Perhaps it's happiness just to be next to the person dear to your heart. And they had it. Nothing in the world could separate them, he thought, falling asleep. He hoped. He prayed. The very first and most impatient sun ray timidly cut through the pre-dawn darkness on the horizon and slowly made its way through a thin, dark cloud. Still quite young, but already bright and daring, it suddenly became aware what an irrepressible strength it possessed, and there was no stopping it. Using all its unbridled power, the ray of sun pierced dense cotton puffs of morning cumulus clouds, then thick crowns of trees, and brazenly directed all its hot energy on the people sleeping on the grass. The beam flooded their faces with bright light and woke them up at the same time. Opening their eyes and squinting from the blinding light, the young people met each other's gazes in the excitement of the anticipation of a new day together. The island odyssey continued, and daily travel became a pleasant routine. He could not wait to show her all the delights the island had to offer and teach her everything that he knew about life there. The island was meant to become her home. 
as dear as it was to him. The variety of amazing places on the island seemed endless. The lovers immersed in an outlandish fairy tale as in the world of their own fantasies lived their lives unrestrained and full of enthusiasm. After a breakfast of fresh fruit they descended into the ravine. Coming closer to the face of a cliff, the men pointed to a dark opening, the entrance to the cave, which they decided to explore. The hole was so narrow that they had difficulty squeezing through, almost getting stuck. A few feet into the darkness, the passage suddenly widened, and turned into an infinitely long and immense cave. Although on the surface the rock hiding this cave did not seem particularly massive. Having taken a few steps into the depths of the cave, they found themselves in a world that resembled nothing of the island life outside. It looked like an artist with the imagination of a child and the talent of an experienced master whimsically expressed his surrealism in paints, and then with the help of magic brought the picture to life. This underground world would be completely dark if not for its own sun and its own moon. They were like two lanterns turned on by someone from opposite sides emanating light at the same time. One of them was burning at full power and the other was so dim that it seemed that it was about to fade away. In the middle of the cave, two lights met and created sharp contrast between the worlds of light and darkness. In the half of the cave, where the sun was blazingly hot, the day was in full swing. Another part was immersed in twilight, and only a weak magical moonlight made it possible to see what was happening in its depths. The unlit side of the cave was filled with huge nests located on different tires and occupying all the dishes inside the rock and ledges. Inside the nests, woven from soft moss, there were birds covered with golden scales instead of feathers. Their folded giant wings barely fit inside their nests, and therefore, for some, they simply hung serenely downward, like cascading golden lacework. The dormant creatures shimmered intensely in the moonlight, creating a mysterious luster, stretching across the entire dark part of the cave, reminiscent of the faraway galaxy filling the night sky. From time to time the birds gracefully flew out of their nests and without a sound circled in the darkness, dimming the moonlight with their bodies for several moments. Even the flapping of wings did not break the magical silence of the night, and only the gilded scales of the flying birds dazzled the lovers watching them with its brilliance. The dragon birds seemed to feel particularly comfortable in the dark half, and did not seek to cross the border with light. Some of them soared high up and, spreading their wings, they glided without uttering a sound. At a distance, they became small, intricate silhouettes against the background of a moon circle, shining with a witch's pale light. And so it was, the dark side striking with deafening silence, and the bright sunny side full of sounds. They were so different. These two worlds, they did not mix, nor interfere with each other as if an invisible but strong wall separated the two opposite universes. Insects occupied the sunny side. Some of them were enormous, flying, jumping and crawling creatures, almost human-sized, made a crazy cacophony of sounds. They fossed around like a busy anthill that knows no rest, and peace. The man and woman stood mesmerized, completely delighted, and looked at the special world of museum of curiosities that seemed to have come to life, long ago created and preserved by some miracle, this world was astonishing and unique. 
Suddenly there was a deafening crash and something colossal began to approach them, blocking the sunlight and making unbearable rumble. They could feel the presence of an unknown and large creature above them, shaking the air with the rapid movements of its wings. The girl was frightened by the sound emanating from the unseen creature, panicked and impulsively pressed her hot body against her beloved, wrapping arms around the strong torso. Closing eyes in fear, she rested her head on his muscular chest. As suddenly as it had appeared, the loud sound abruptly disappeared into silence. All this loud horror was created by a giant dragonfly, common for these places, which flew past, flapping its transparent lace wings. But at that moment, the dragonfly ceased to be the center of attention. The lovers no longer cared about the flying monster. Pressing close to each other, their bodies touched so tightly Electricity surged between their naked skin. The touch shook them with excitement that they had never experienced before. He squeezed her in his arms and did not want to let go of her. A wave of tenderness ran through his chest and his mind was filled with thoughts that nothing more beautiful ever happened to him. Holding their breath, they stood locked in embrace, motionless, afraid to scare away a new, inexplicable, pleasant sensation. They were overwhelmed with new feelings of awe and excitement. Leaving the cave, they have not quite realized that the invisible link connecting them had undergone changes. It became more delicate and fragile. In the evening, both exhausted, they fell asleep for the first time and twined in each other's arms. The lovers spent the next morning by the ocean, basking in the sun and splashing in the azure waves. Tired, drunk with happiness and caressed by ocean air, they went back to the hills in search for food. The wonderful island offered all its treasures to the lovers and threw everything it owned at their feet. Picturesque, fragrant olive groves full of trees with silvery foliage stood nearby. The lush green grass that covered the ground beneath the trees was dotted with islets of deep red puppies. Like fire lanterns here and there, they lit up with red flame. Soft pink butterflies fluttered around. The grove was immersed in absolute peace and quiet, as if the surrounding world, with its bird songs and the rustle of grass and the sound of breaking waves, had ceased to exist. The trunks of the olive trees crooked and intricately carved by time, each one unique and unlike the other, grew out of the ground in discordant ranks that were climbing up the hill. The grove looked like groups of wiggling creatures, some alone, some in pairs, moving in a dance. They frolicked like crazy, following their own bizarre dance steps, warmed and cheered by the hot sun above the island. Some of the trunks resembled fossilized fantastic monsters. They stretched out their crooked arms branches as if they forever froze unsuspecting victims under a spell of captivity and turned them into eccentric olive trees. Perhaps all these trees were enchanted creatures that tried to resist evil spirits, but they did not have the strength to defeat witchcraft, and so they stood forever petrified in unnatural fighting poses. The branches of the olive trees were invitingly strewn with overripe dark fruits. Bathing in the rays of the hot sun, olives absorbed warmth and energy, ripening into plump flesh. They were tart, bittersweet in taste, but there was something in them that was tempting to pick and eat another and another. Both hungry lovers plucked fruits and reached for new ones. The hills, seemingly not wanting to share their harvest, decided to play a cruel joke with them. The incline, hidden under the long grass, suddenly grew too steep. The lovers stumbled, slipped and rolled head over hills over the soft grass down into a shallow ravine. At the moment of the fall, instinctively protecting his beloved, 
The young man embraced her with strong arms and held her tightly to him. Having rolled into a gully, they found themselves heaped together. She was on top, but he did not release her from his bear hug and still held her close, guarding her from danger that was no longer there. He felt her firm breasts pressing pleasantly into his belly and her hot breath as she buried her face into his shoulder. A ravine with soft damp grass took them into its cozy alcove and wrapped them protectively on all sides. They stayed motionless, wanting to prolong this new and wonderful moment, barely breathing in the anticipation of the unknown. After a minute, she raised her face and their gazes met. Her beautiful eyes draped with delightful mist as she looked at him. Naughty curls framed her face in a wonderful disarray. She blushed irresistible in this moment. Their lips were almost touching. He held her tightly in his arms. She did not resist. On the contrary, she answered him with an inviting smile. Her breath penetrated inside him. He absorbed her warmth, which descended into the depth, turning into an avalanche fire that engulfed him from within. The awkwardness of the situation vanished into thin air. They were both ready to succumb to the desire that had followed them from the very moment of their first embrace in the cave. The man and the woman secretly struggled with sweet yet confusing longing and pain that squeezed their hearts at very recollection of the visit to the cave. Neither could shake the strange feeling off. Their lips barely touched, but hot wave of passion already swept away everything in its path and covered them, not allowing them to come to their senses. The air around them was filled with the sounds of the alarm, their hearts beating so loudly. The shock caught them off guard, took over before they even understood what was happening. Their lips pressed together, breasts mixed and time stood still. Passion swallowed them up and carried in a whirlwind of pleasure. They merged in a hot kiss. When they opened their arms, their world was no longer the same. Pure, immaculate, innocent love had been suddenly supplemented by a missing element. Still hard to explain and comprehend, but already uncontrollable, all-consuming and all-destructive. They did not realize this particular piece was missing. They fell in love at first sight, and this love was innocent, sublime, true. Each of them believed that it could not be better. A casual, subtle kiss of hot lips raised a storm of new and inexplicable emotions in their souls, never experienced before. Life as if opened a secret door into another world, which is painted with different colors, suddenly brighter and more saturated. The altered relationship filled with embraces, strokes, and kisses now seemed to them the peak of bliss. They both believed that the last missing piece was found, and they felt whole. It's the moment to be seized. Time should freeze forever at this very second and leave our infatuated couple at the peak of love, overwhelmed with passion, yet at the fringe of the unknown. May they forever remain pure and immaculate and content with what they have. But the platonic, chaste world of contemplation and purity was suddenly replaced by a new deep sensual world. Once careless, an easy flow of days is now accompanied by inner excitement and gentle trembling. The lightest touches and naive glances now raise a storm of passions, in the couple of love. Even the night, with its peaceful sounds, brought them no relief. In the glow of moonlight, they lay on bed of grasses, caressing each other's face, shoulders, hands, and looking deeply into the eyes. 
sinking into the well of bliss. They were possessed. In each other's eyes they found their own reflection of amorous yearning. They fell asleep under the starry sky, overwhelmed with absolute happiness, still full of innocence, but already laced with air of insane passion. They shared both feelings and thoughts. Under cover of silence of the night, so many thoughts flashed through her mind, so many things she wanted to say to him. In soft moonlight, her eyes spoke without uttering a single word. Do you know what to call this feeling? When I fall into your embrace, it's like plunging into a sweet and deep pool, knowing that nothing could be better in this world. When a fleeting flash of a thought of you provokes instant desire to leave everything and spread my wings and fly to you for just a touch. When the memories of the night spent together cause sweet pain and irresistible, utterly trembling craving to experience it again and never leave you, my love. How can I define this feeling? When I melt in your hands like a snowflake on warm skin, then I spread like honey just to explode like a volcano full of hot lava a moment later. When I barely touch your skin and desire strikes like an electric shock. Is there a name for this feeling? When you lie next to me, your whisper envelops and carries me on the clouds to a wonderland. When I look into your eyes and dissolve in them like a dark night in pre-dawn colors, just as inoxorably and immutably. How can you call this feeling when it seems that I have known you all my life and at the same time you intrigued me and remain incomprehensible? Is there a word that can name this feeling when I feel absolute comfort next to you and there are no barriers? From a half word, from a half glance, you read my thoughts and understand all the depth of my soul. How can you possibly express when I want to take you in completely without a trace in order to be able to live and feel you every minute inside myself? They both knew that such a combination of simple letters did not exist, because not a single human word in the entire world can contain the incredible range of emotions, the palette of feelings and pleasures that they experienced next to each other. This is something inexplicable, cosmic, incomprehensible, transcendental. Although the island still opened all its picturesque beauty before them and persistently offered to enjoy it, the lovers turned from inquisitive and carefree pilgrims into contemplative slow wanderers. They seemed to become vulnerable, experiencing new feelings that now accompanied them. The intoxicating burden of desire after the first kiss made them think about the craving to know the further depths inaccessible to them. Like voracious creatures who managed to grab a piece of the forbidden delicacy, they wanted to taste even more. The young man, as if he had acquired the ability to smell for the first time, suddenly began to realize captivating scent emanating from his companion, and it drove him insane. As echoes of distant past from the fringes of his memory, obsessive images of vivid fantasies emerged in his mind. These flashbacks were filled with naked bodies, swaying breasts, moist lips and female thighs moving in frenzy. He always admired the beauty of the ideal body of his porcelain goddess, but now he found curves seductive, roundness, tempting. White skin made him lust, want to stroke her and inhale the smell. 
Even her golden hair, like a dancing flame, kindled the fire inside him. Looking into his beautiful honey-colored eyes, the girl noticed that there was something new and unfamiliar in their depth, something besides the endless love which she saw before. This new look disarmed her, made her feel both shy and willing to give him her heart. In the wondrous shine of the moon, he was studying her body as if he saw her for the first time. All this excited some unknown and pleasant feelings in her. She wanted to belong to him unconditionally and completely as he enveloped her with a new intoxicating energy. Millions of gentle butterflies suddenly began to flutter somewhere deep in her belly and tickle all the innermost places with their velvet wings. This immersed her in blissful languor, a sweet but painful pleasure. It seemed to her that the ball of love energy was growing and very soon it would swell so much that it would tear her chest and burst out. The season of twinkling nights had already arrived. Each subsequent night brighter than the last. The journey around the island dragged on many days, and nostalgia for home under the sprawling giant tree gradually began to overwhelm him. It had been nearly four weeks since they met and left the turquoise hill. He was tempted to go back. At sunset, the path took them through rocky hillsides densely covered with lavender flowers. Fields the color of amethyst stretched far beyond the horizon, where these endless rows of lavender bushes merged with the purple-red sunset. The beauty of lilac flowers immersed them in a state of nirvana. Their aroma through the cover of enigma over the lovers, soothing troubled thoughts, hypnotizing. It was impossible to resist sitting on the soft grass and getting lost in purple magic. They breathed in the lavender scent and lay mesmerized, sinking in the sea of millions of purple blossoms. She picked some flowers, weaved them into a wreath, and tenderly put it on his head. The flowers were full of alluring fragrance. Adorned with a wreath, in a soft, enchanting light of the sunset, he looked like an ancient god descended from a pedestal to earth. Sharply outlined features of a courageous face, strong muscles on a tanned naked body, a strong will piercing gaze, he was half lying on a grass, leisurely and naturally stretching one leg forward and bending the other leaning his elbow on the soft surface. He was as beautiful as a god and possessed incredible strength and power over her. Their gazes met. Sweet languor spread in the depth of her soul. She melted under his tempter's gaze but could not take her eyes from him. He attracted her. His eyes burned with crimson fire. Red setting sun like flames reflected in them. A drop of rain fell on their shoulders, then another one and another, a light rain started. The warm droplets lingered on the skin for a moment and then flowed down, washing away the dust and fatigue of the passing day. Yielding to a sudden and irresistible desire, she timidly touched his hip and ran her hand lower along his leg. Under her hot palm, the raindrops joined into a stream of water and she slowly brushed them down. She continued to stroke his muscular feet legs. Even relaxed, they were shapely and strong. Her palms grabbed and squeezed voluminous massive calves, there was something attractive, courageous, seductive in them. She slowly ran her hands over his skin, 
from feet to thighs, as if trying to memorize every curve of the muscle in his legs. The man shuddered. Instantly, as if obeying a silent order from above, she lowered her face to his foot and kissed his toes. Damp from rain, she began kissing his feet. Somewhere, deep inside him, a lump of previously suppressed desire burst out. He trembled, helpless, falling into a abyss of unknown sweet and dangerous feelings. She didn't stop. She continued to shower kisses on his skin, covered in goosebumps and raindrops, sensitive as bare wires that were about to short, an untamable, cruel and voluptuous predator. She tested him as if she were not a virgin creature, but a sophisticated priestess of love. She gripped two toes with wet mouth and penetrated her tongue between them, and that pierced him like a current. He uttered a groan of full of delight. An irresistible desire to take possession of her was bursting his chest, eclipsing his mind. At the same time, both sweet and excruciating pain rolled in raging waves inside him. The restless and incessant inner voice held him back. But he did not want to obey that voice of reason. He wanted to own her, he desired her, and did not care about the consequences. She did not care for anything either. Her hot, ardent kisses were proof of that. He wanted her with every cell of his body, and was ready to quench this thirst. Suddenly, Lighting flashed brightly, followed by deafening thunder a moment later. In a split second, the whole sky lit up with brilliant fire. Lightnings flashed one after another, striking the ground as gigantic red-hot swords. Another clap of thunder rolled above, and the earth trembled. The roar intensified with every minute, forcing the lovers to wake up from their passionate delirium. The sky suddenly darkened. A strong gust of wind brought a stream of rain, stinging them with large drops. They finally shook off the spell and jumped to their feet. There was something terrifying and at the same time delightful in this chaos. A mixture of fire, water and wind. Laughing, holding hands, they hurried back to the center of the island under the safety cover of the mighty giant tree. Almost bending under the evil gusts of wind, naked but in defiance of the forces of nature, they pressed forward. The rain blurred their eyes, their hair soaked through, and water rolled down their faces in little torrents. They reached a turquoise hill, and the wind suddenly died down. The rain was over. The dark sky instantly brightened and filled with silver enchanted light, pouring down to the ashen covering of the island and scattering its magical glow everywhere. They climbed to the top of the turquoise hill. Tired, they collapsed into the embrace of the velvet bed and fell fast asleep despite the complete absence of darkness. The mysterious island was draped from all sides by moonlight. The diffused luminary penetrated through the sparkling curtain of fog and the dense crown of the giant tree, brightly illuminating the people sleeping under it. A pair of bodies, intertwined in an embrace, looked especially beautiful in this glowing halo. The stars reflected on their skin, coloring them in all shades of silver, 